At the next topic is what I call decision analysis. So let's say we've got our, assembled our loan file. We have our information about the three C's. We have the appraisal, we have the credit report, and so on. Uh, have the borrower's income information. And now we've got to make a decision. Uh, the decisions that we make with the loan, we have a an approve or, or deny decision, so approve the loan or deny, and we also have a pricing decision. That is, do we, um, we could charge a high rate, which would be appropriate for a risky loan, and then a low rate for a safe loan. Okay, the reason you want to charge a high rate for a risky loan is that if you take a whole bunch of risky loans, uh, let's say 10% of them are going to default, <coughs> you need to charge a high interest rate compared to loans that have, let's say, a 1% default rate. Um, the approve, <coughs> and in fact, if if pricing could take care of everything, you could approve any loan, right? You could just say, um, well, at a you know at a 15% interest rate, this loan's worth it, even though the default probability might be pretty high. Uh, the reason that that you can't just take every loan uh, and just charge a high enough price is that once the interest rate gets high enough, that in itself means that the borrower is likely to default. Um, you know, very few people nowadays could, have, could conceivably afford a 15% mortgage rate, and if that's the rate that you need to make up for the risk, then you just have to go ahead and deny them the loan. There's no way you can make that loan. Um, so we can talk, so the approval deny decision is, is actually a significant decision uh, in this process. Let me next talk about um, sort of two determinants of the outcome of a loan. One is, or sort of, let, let's look at the whole process. Let's not look at it one loan at a time. Let's look at a, the process for looking at a, a bunch of loans. And let, let's say you could be either strict, you can be very strict at this end of the uh, spectrum, and at this end of the spectrum, you're relatively loose. You allow a lot of loans that, <coughs> that a strict underwriter wouldn't wouldn't approve. So, he, so loose, you approve a lot of loans. Strict, you deny a lot of loans. The other determinative outcome is is the subsequent, and I want to emphasize subsequent economic conditions. You know, in particular, what do house prices do after you've approved the loan? So if the subsequent economic conditions are good and you had strict underwriting standards, you should have very few defaults. So in this region up here, you should have very few defaults. If you offered loose underwriting criteria and the subsequent outcome uh, outcomes in the economy were falling house prices and uh, borrowers having trouble coming up with the incomes to pay, pay the loans, then you're going to have a lot of defaults in this, in this region. And <coughs> so it's important to understand that it's not just the decision that the strictness or looseness of the decision, it's also the subsequent economy that matters. And the other point to make is that uh, you know, after all, when all is said and done, uh, a third party, like a politician or a shareholder of a company, can criticize your decisions afterward and say, like, well, you know, given that the <coughs> given that the economy came out, let's say, really well. If you had strict underwriting standards, you probably missed out on some good loans. And 
uh, all through the early part of the 2000s as the housing bubble was heating up, lenders who maintained any sort of strict underwriting standards were being criticized because uh, the, the default rates on uh, even loosely underwritten loans were low. Then all of a sudden the uh, crash hit and people said, oh, I can't believe that you, that you lent to some of these people. You were just trying to exploit these borrowers. You had no business lending these people. You knew that they couldn't pay the loans. How could you have made those loans? And this is all based on <coughs> kind of after the fact, looking at results, not ahead of time, looking at sort of the, the what should be uh, the choice about loose versus strict. I'm going to introduce just some terminology here. Uh, it's called, in statistics, it's known as type 1 and type 2 error. Type 1 error is you accept a loan or you approve a loan that is bad. And that the definition of bad could be outcome oriented, that is, uh, it defaults, <coughs> or it could be a loan that is risky, uh, regardless of whether it turns out to default. But let's, let's think of it in terms of default. And you deny a loan that is good. So let's think in terms of bad and good. Bad is subsequently defaulted. Uh, good is that uh, it actually, <coughs> somebody else made the, that same loan and it didn't default, or uh, if you had made the loan, it would not have defaulted. So we can do something again in statistics that's pretty familiar. We can talk about the outcome of the loan, which is, let's say it, it pays or it defaults. And then the decision on the loan, which is, it could be approve or deny. So if you approve a loan and it pays off, you made a good decision. If you deny a loan that defaults, you made a bad decision. If you approve a loan that defaults, you made a type 1 error. And if you deny a loan that pays off, you made a type 2 error. Uh, it's important to know that the type 1 and type 2 error costs are quite different. If you're the one who's taking the risk on the loan, let's just say you're, you're going to hold the loan, then a type 1 error is very costly. Because there you're going to you know, when you take a default, you could lose, uh, you often lose about half of the amount of the loan. So if you had a $100,000 loan, you might lose $50,000 on that loan. Type 2 error is usually not very costly because it depends on the profit margin that's in the business, but the profit margin on a good loan might be you know, on the, more on the order of $5,000 or less. So <coughs> the type 2 error costs much less. Therefore, you, you want to err on the side of trying to make very few type 1, type one errors because they cost a lot. And you're willing to make, if you have to, more type 2 errors. You're willing to pass on some loans that had a decent chance of paying off uh, in order to avoid the type 1 error. So that's the beginnings of decision analysis. I'm going to have more to say in a subsequent talk.